If relationships are the real currency in life, if referrals are the lifeblood of business, how do we, the entrepreneurs, the small business owners, compete in this ever-changing, fast-paced world? How do we become more so we can attract more? Those are the questions, and in this podcast, we will reveal the secrets. Hey, my name is Tony Crawford, and I am your host today at referralsecrets.com podcast. Hey, my guess is that you're joining us today because you desire a business that is thriving with unstoppable referrals, or perhaps you are seeking new ways to deepen your connections with your team, professional network, and even your personal relationships so that they never hesitate to speak your name when your expertise is needed for one of their connections. Hey, if that sounds like you, then you're gonna enjoy today's guest, Dr. Ivan Meisner, owner of BNI Business Network International. Dr. Meisner has written 26 books and he is a New York Times best-selling author. He's a columnist for entrepreneur.com and is called the father of modern networking by Forbes and CNN. He's been featured in numerous publications and TV shows and was named Humanitarian of the Year by the Red Cross. He takes a genuine interest in everyone he meets, which has helped him build a successful multi-billion dollar business. In today's podcast, Dr. Meisner will offer great tips on building a successful business through the power of relationships. Please welcome Dr. Ivan Meisner to today's show. Welcome today, Dr. Ivan Meisner. Dr. Meisner is the founder and chief visionary officer of BNI Business Network International, which is the largest net business networking organization in the world. And I believe you just celebrated 36 years of growth. Is that correct? Yeah, 36 years of consecutive growth year on year. Uh, I think there are very few companies in the world that can say they've grown uh, for 36 years in a row. It, during the craziest year of our lifetime, the, the pandemic, uh, we actually grew because businesses needed help more than ever during the pandemic. Exactly. You're absolutely right about that. So what do you attribute to this amazing success? Well, look, you know, a couple, I mean, there's a, a lot of things. It's always a formula. It's never one thing. Um, the, you know, the one secret to success is there is no one secret. It's, it's, it's always a formula. Um, I think that formula includes a couple of really important aspects. One is that culture eats strategy for breakfast. The culture is the secret sauce to any successful organization. Um, and, and, and strategy is important, but if, if you have a great strategy in a marginal culture, you're, you're gonna have challenges. And years like the one we just experienced um, would be a great example of where you'll have a challenge. But if you have a great culture and a good strategy, you can get through difficult times. If you have a great culture and a great strategy, you'll be the industry leader. And I think that's probably one of the things that uh, has uh, had us be successful for 36 years is that we have an amazing strategy, but more importantly, a, an, an incredible culture as an organization. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Incredible. So let's back up a little bit. Share with our listeners today. So a lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs, salespeople, business owners, and they're always looking for some magic formula <laughs> I'm sure you, yeah. you know that as well, but let's take it back a step and just share with our audience, what was the defining moment in your life that inspired you to create and launch BNI? Yeah, I'd be happy to, to tell that story, but can I touch upon your, your comment that the, uh, people are always looking for that, you know, magic bullet or magic pill? Yeah, uh, look, I, here, so here's the thing I think that a lot of people don't understand. You want to be successful in business, I believe, you have to do six things a thousand times, not a thousand things six times. Yeah. And what most people do is they're constantly chasing bright, shiny objects. I always keep this here by my desk. Uh, if, you're, if you're listening, what I have is a crystal ball and it's a little crystal uh, um, shiny object. And it's like, oh, 
ooh, something else that's shiny, let's go after that. And, and that's what people do constantly is they're chasing the next shiny object instead of figuring out what's it take to be successful in that business and then do six things a thousand times. And by the way, it doesn't have to be six. It could be five, it could be seven, but it's doing a handful of things and doing them over and over and over and over again, consistently over time. That's what creates success. And how do you come up with those things? Well, you listen to shows like this. You find people who, who are successful. That's important. Don't just listen to anyone. Listen to somebody that is successful in their field. Okay. Figure out what resonates with you. Pick those handful of things and then be a dog with a bone. If I, I have any superpower at all as a business person is that I'm a dog with a bone. I'll take something and work it, work it, and work it. Now, you asked this, a second part of that question, which was um, when, when was my moment where I said, oh my goodness, th this is, I call, it, uh, I call it my Brady, my Brody, my Brody moment. Do you remember uh, the movie Jaws? Yes. Okay, well in Jaws, um, Tony, there's towards the end of the movie, Brody was the sheriff and he on the um, boat with Captain and for the first time, I uh, heard Brody the sharks by and his eyes get big. And he walks over to the captain and he says, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Yes, I remember. So yeah, my Brody moment was about 11, a little over 11 months into uh, doing BNI. Cause I mean, I'd like to tell you that I, I, I had this vision of a global organization, but I just wanted some referrals from my management consulting business. And I wanted to help my friends uh, to get referrals. And so I put together this group that was, I felt relational, not transactional. And um, that it was, um, uh, you know, focused on doing business, but not completely, um, you know, mercenary. And the glue that would hold it together is our principal core value of giver's gain, this idea that we would help each other. And the thing just snowballed. We ended up opening 20 chapters kind of by accident. Well, my, my, my moment was at the end of the year where I looked back and I realized just how big the organization had grown. And, and I realized that that this could be much, much bigger than it was. And we now have 10,000 chapters and actually 10,200 chapters in more than 70 countries. Yeah, it's amazing. There's so much that you just shared that I really want to touch upon. You talked about friends and the relationship and helping them get referrals and givers gain. There's so many nuggets in there. Um, you know, with us, we talk about building your business through referrals. How do you get those referrals? Yeah. It's about the relationship. So can you speak to that? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. I think it's totally about the relationship. And what happens is that most people use networking as a face-to-face -face cold calling opportunity. Yeah. You know, hi, Tony, my name's Ivan, let's do business. And they go right into selling. When it's really about uh, building relationships. Networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about cultivating relationships with people. So the foundation of everything I teach is really based on three things. I call it the VCP process, visibility, credibility, profitability. First, you have to be visible. People have to know who you are. You have to make a connection with them so they know who you are and what you do. Then you establish credibility and that's the one that takes time. Uh, and credibility is where people know who you are, they know what you do, and they know you're good at it. They've, they've seen other people, they've talked to other people about you, they know you're credible, they know you're good at what you do. And then and only then can you get the profitability where people know who you are, they know what you do, they know you're good at it, and they're willing to refer you. What happens is that people try to jump over visibility, over credibility, get right to profitability. And in one of my books, we call that premature solicitation, which you don't wanna say fast three times, it'll get you in trouble. <laughs> And, and it, that doesn't work. It's all about the relationships. Right, right. Giver's Game. Um, with Giver's Game, you actually believe that Giver's Game is a way of living. Yeah. That absolutely. it is an attitude and not an expectation. So can you share your insight about that philosophy with us? Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I say is the Giver's Game is, is more than a phrase to me. It's a way of living, living one's life. It's a perspective to view and interact with the world. It's an attitude, not an expectation, as you said. And when it's applied properly, it'll change your life. And when it changes enough lives, 
it'll change the world. And we're doing that reasonably well within BNI. The last trailing 12 months, uh, BNI has generated 18 billion, with a B, 18 billion US dollars worth of business for our members in local communities all around the world. Now, just so you know, Tony, 18 billion is more than twice the uh, gross domestic product for the country of Liechtenstein. <laughs> okay, it's a small country, I know. But still, how cool is that, that we that could actually awesome. be generating uh, more business than some small countries in the world for our members during the craziest time I've ever seen? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had great experience with um, BNI. And I have watched several people come into BNI, not knowing what to do, me being one of them, but you have great, within the chapters, great training tools, BNI University. I have seen people start here and grow to here. And obviously your numbers speak for themselves. We talked about what you um, contribute to the success of BNI. We've talked about relationships. Let's talk about leadership and how you're able to develop that within this culture. Yeah, well, you know, leadership is uh, such an important um, factor in success. I studied under uh, Warren Bennis, mm -hmm. who was at the University of Southern California, who was in his day, uh, the world's leading expert on leadership. That mantle has been handed over to uh, John Maxwell, uh, who I have gotten to know well, and you may have seen on, on BNI University, a, a business builder's site. Um, John and I did about 16 videos together on leadership. And I think leadership is, uh, is critical uh, in, in any endeavor in business. And I think it's, it's really, um, it begins with um, having a certain sense of humility as to who you are as a, as a leader mm -hmm. and inspiring people. You know, I, I feel that as a leader, my job is to inspire people who inspire people. Not just to inspire someone, but to inspire someone who inspires others. And uh, you do that by, by recognizing great performance and also by holding people accountable. That accountability, which is one of our core values in BNI, that's hard. Yeah. That's, that's hard to do, uh, holding people accountable. But I think you hold them accountable more like Mandela than Attila. Uh, you know, you do you do tough love, right. uh, but tough love is a, is a, is important in leadership. Right. So with BNI, it's a business networking organization that really hones yeah. in on not only relationship building but getting to the point where your business is growing from referrals. And we understand that's yeah. about relationship, but what is some key advice that you could offer our listeners? Because many of our listeners, they're looking, okay, how do I build my relationships so that I'm getting referrals? Yeah, one of the most important things that we found in BNI is the, the critical nature of one-to-one. -one. That is, when you've met someone, when you have uh, made a connection with somebody, that uh, you do a one-to-one -one with them where you sit down and you talk to them about what they do, who they are, uh, and, and what you do. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we did a, there was a university study done in Europe uh, on a BNI region, and they took a look at um, people who did one-to-ones, and they compared members who did one one-to-one -one a month to members who did four one-to-ones a month. The people who did four one-to-ones a month or roughly one a week gave twice as many referrals as the people who only did one a month. But more importantly, they received twice as many referrals. Wow as the people who did one one-to-one -one a month. So if you're involved in a network and you have a connection with somebody, it's not a total stranger, those numbers hold true. You, you meet with them, you, do, you go do a deep dive, uh, you get to know each other a little bit better and the chances of you generating referrals with that person go, go up significantly. Yeah, absolutely. That is great. 
I actually had the privilege of interviewing a gentleman, Jason Avery, out of Tampa Bay, who belongs to the second largest BNI in the U.S. Incredible. And we yeah. talked a lot about relationships and what, what they, um, how to build them. So I can tell you with going to BNI, one of the things that I finally learned was when I'm sitting down with someone, speaking with them, one of the questions that I would ask is, how can I best serve you? It was like a deer caught in headlights. Yeah. Like nobody asked this question. So speak no. to us, why is that so important? Why is that such a great question to ask with humility and with that servant attitude? Yeah, I think it's an important question because most people are used to, uh, in a networking environment, um, you know, being sold to. Mm. Uh, I, I, I did an event maybe... Oh, it was quite a few years ago in London and there were 900 people in the audience and I sat a, saw a lot of direct selling going on and I was the keynote speaker and I said, how many of you are here today? Raise your hands if you're hoping to maybe just possibly sell something. Tony, 900 people raised their hands. Wow. I said, cool, how many of you are here today hoping to you know, maybe just possibly buy something? No one raised their hands, yeah. not one single person. This is what I call the networking disconnect. People show up to networking uh, meetings wanting to sell, but nobody's there to buy. So when you meet somebody and they say, how can I help you? That is that just a complete mindset reset to uh, what most of people experience with networking. And, and I think it's the right approach. It's like, let's work together. Let's help one another. Now, maybe you can't help them, but maybe you, you can, or maybe you can move in the direction of being able to do what they're asking for. And yeah. so it's all about building that relationship with other people. And uh, that question is a powerful, powerful question. I did have one person, you might find this interesting. I had one person once, it was a radio interview uh, on the radio and uh, on live on air, he said, oh, that old adage, you know, how can I help you? That never works. It's, it's old hat, which I don't think it is, but I didn't want to argue with him right. on the radio. So we moved to the next topic. At the end, at the end of the uh, interview, we were off air and we were talking a little bit and he, he mentioned somebody, a particular name, a, a well-known name that he wanted on a show. And uh, I said, oh, he's a, he's a, no, actually, I take it back. We were talking about people that he, he wanted on the show. And I said to him, how can I help you with that? And then he named uh, somebody he was looking for. And I said, I know him. I know him well. Would you like me to introduce you to him? But I started with, how can I help you with that? Mm. And he, and he, he told me, and I, I said, I'll make the introduction today. And oh, by the way, um, that's how, how can I help you works? And he, he said, touche, you're absolutely right. I, I, I stepped right into it. You asked, I responded, you helped. Uh, and so here was a guy who said it didn't work, who I, 30 minutes later, had it work with him. Yeah. That, that's a great story because I think a lot of people oftentimes go into meetings or they're with individuals and they're thinking about me, me, what's in it for me instead of, okay, what can I bring to the table and how can I help this person? And isn't that the, the foundation of building a solid relationship? It is. It absolutely is. You know, giver's gain is, is two words. Uh, it's about giving and it's also about receiving and it's okay to get both. Uh, but I have found that the best way to get business is to help other people in some way. And it may, be, it may be giving them referrals. It may be helping them in their business in some way. It may be giving advice, making a connection. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to give. Uh, and when you do that, then you're building social capital. And that's the key here is building social capital. You have to, you have to build social capital. You have to invest in social capital before you make a, a withdrawal. And in that sense, social capital is very similar to financial capital. Banks have this crazy idea that you actually have to put some money in a checking account before you write a check on it. You, you have to put money in before you draw money out. And social capital is really very much the same. It helps if you invest in the relationship a little bit before you make a withdrawal or try to make a withdrawal. Yeah. So there's a lot of advantages to be, being a BNI member. Not only are you taught how to really deepen your existing relationships, but you make new friends, which lead to business. Yeah. But BNI also provides this amazing training. Yeah. 
to really teach anyone how to do everything in business and about relationships. Why did you throw that into the mix? Well, one of our core values is lifelong learning. And uh, one of the epiphanies I had, when, you know, in the beginning of our interview, I talked about how I looked back uh, and, and was just amazed at how we opened 20 chapters. One of the epiphanies that I had then was that we don't teach this in colleges and universities anywhere in the world. We don't teach networking. We don't teach social capital, emotional intelligence. And so one of my goals was that in the organization, we would start to teach people how to network because most people just don't have a clue or what they think is networking is really direct selling and they're doing it wrong. And so uh, that's why I started writing books. That's why I, you know, I started a blog uh, 14 years ago to back in 2007, I have a podcast and we have, like you mentioned, BNI University, which is just for BNI members. We have all of this content, by the way, for those of you listening that aren't or watching that aren't uh, in BNI, uh, IvanMeisner.com is my blog and I have 14 years of content up there. It's all free. Uh, take a look at it. And I think really teach people uh, how to do this process of networking so they're not making it up as they go. And right. That's why lifelong learning was one of our core values. Absolutely. And you are a New York Times bestseller. 26 books, I believe you authored. What's your latest? Yes. Uh, my latest book is The Connector Effect, and it's about how you, and it's, it's very, just so everyone knows, full disclosure, it's BNI centric. It talks about how in BNI, you can become a connector. And that when you're a connector, when you're connecting people with other people, then you become an influencer. And mm -hmm. when you're an influencer, people are going to refer you. It's called The Connector Effect, how you become a master connector. Uh, and it's, it's available on Amazon. Before that, it was... Um, Infinite Giving. I did a book called Infinite Giving, uh, which was about the seven principles of giver's game. Nice. So if I, listening, as a listener to this podcast, Referral Secrets, want to learn more about BNI and maybe visit a local chapter, how do I do that? Well, uh, BNI.com. Uh, BNI.com and then just uh, fill out. There's a section in there, find a chapter near you. And we have, as, as I mentioned, over 10,200 chapters in 70 countries around the world. Many of them are still meeting online, not all of them, uh, but in places where, uh, you know, the concern for COVID is still in place, uh, they're meeting uh, online. Otherwise, uh, we are transitioning gradually back to in-person meetings. And by the way, uh, during COVID, we did a, a very quick pivot where yeah. we moved yeah. 10,000 chapters who were meeting in person uh, to online. And now we're gradually, we did the pivot to online quickly. We're doing the pivot off online uh, gradually as it's safe for people to do so. And uh, um, it's, 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 it's going well. We've been able to do well during difficult times. And, and the reason for that, I think, is that BNI is a beacon of hope yes. in a sea of fear. We live in fearful times, but your network is a, a group of people that you can rely on to support you emotionally, professionally, and through referrals, through business. Uh, and, and, you know, today more than ever, you need your network. And I think that's why BNI is, is such a great place to go, bni.com. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Now, I wanna kind of go back to the beginning. We talked about, you shared how BNI has grown during COVID. And I know that I've seen chapters explode during this time. On the other side of that, I can drive through my town as I'm sure you can and see so many businesses that have closed. Yeah. For various reasons, but fear. You spoke of, about that a minute ago. Let, let's talk more about fear and how to move out of that into a positive environment like BNI. Yeah. So um, over the last 36 years, I've been through multiple recessions. And of course, the COVID uh, virus and the recession that resulted was the most serious I've seen during my tenure. But throughout those years, when times are tough, I see people either get frozen by fear or focused by fear. Mm -hmm. And I think we all get frozen at least for a minute. You know, it's all like, oh heck, what am I gonna do now? Yeah. 
Right. And, and that's natural. But the quicker you can get out of that and let that fear focus you, the more likely you're going to get through it and, and, and do well to not only survive, but thrive. Because I believe hope is more powerful than fear. Hope mm. plus a plan plus action will, will absolutely beat down fear and allow you to be uh, successful. And I think that that means that you've got to choose the lens that you see the world through. So that when you know everyone around you is running around, if you can focus and look for the opportunities that exist in that moment, then you're going to be more successful. I love astronomy. And I've written about this on my blog. The lens that you see the world through personally is important in the same way that the lens you see the planets or the moon through. Uh, when I look at the moon, if I have a regular lens on it, it actually hurts my eyes. You know, imagine walking into a pitch black room and turning on a bright light, your eyes hurt. When you look through the moon through a, a, a telescope lens, it hurts unless you put a filter on it or a different lens on it. And then all of a sudden the moon opens up to you. you can, it feels like you can touch the craters on the moon. It's incredible. Or if you put a different lens on, you can see the Andromeda uh, galaxy, or you can see the ice cap of Mars. And it, the, you know, the world, the universe opens up to you depending on the lens you put on the telescope. I would argue that the world opens up to you depending on the lens that you use to view the world and the opportunities. And even during COVID, many, many businesses found opportunities to, to survive and thrive uh, during those times. Yeah. I listened to a um, YouTube video that you did about motivation and how you had made the decision to stop watching a particular TV show and talked yeah. about the importance of surrounding yourself with the correct people, the correct information. And I think during COVID, so many of us went down the rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. And that motivation and those decisions are even more important today, I believe. So can you can you speak to that a little bit as well? Yeah, I think um, the news drives me nuts. You know, I grew up in the days of Walter Cronkite early. I was young, Walter Cronkite and, and, and some of the people who followed him, where where there would be this, you know, line across the bottom of the screen that says, this is the opinion of uh, our commentator. Uh, this is not necessarily the opinions of this station. Well, today, I think the news are not, I don't think it's news stations. They're opinion stations. And mm -hmm. depending on which station you watch, you get a completely different view of what's going on in the world. And so my advice to most people is microdose the news. Because when I see people that are obsessing over particularly one channel, they're getting one view, they're getting the opinions uh, from these people. I don't think they're really getting the straightforward news. So I have gone strictly to, I, know, I don't watch the news anymore, I read apps. And I try to find apps that are more independent, uh, that aren't quite so one-sided one direction or the other. And, and I you know, pick and choose, I look at what I feel I need to know to be a good citizen in the world. Um, but I don't sit there and overdose on the news because I, I'm telling you, people who do that are just, they become obsessed and depressed uh, over what they think is happening when in fact they're just, look, the news business, the opinion, I'm sorry, the opinion stations are um, big money now. And they're big money because they suck you in by having these very strong opinions that rile people up. So I, uh, I microdose the news and I recommend most people do it. Yeah. And you even limit yourself to what type of TV you expose yourself yeah. to. Is yeah. Correct? So there was a, there was a, a show um, and, and I, I did this years ago when I, when I was diagnosed uh, with cancer, I, I had really wanted to um, put positive things in my head. And there was a, a, a television show that I watched. I won't name it. You, I'm sure you saw it maybe in my blog or podcast. Um, and it great show fantastic writing, but very dark and very violent, TV violence, but very violent, uh, even by TV standards. 
And I said, you know, I love watching the show, but I'm not going to watch it anymore. And I, 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 I stopped watching it completely because I just didn't want that in my head anymore. And, and so I think you, you have to um, minimize contact with negative programming, with negative people. Uh, you need to maximize your time with positive people, people who refuel your energy. In one of my books, in, in the book, Who's in Your Room? I say, spend time with engines, not anchors. People that help you drive you to be a better version of yourself, not people who pull you down. So that means you read, listen, watch positive things. Uh, and, and, um, and always look at the big picture, where you wanna go. Have a, have a goal, a vision of where you wanna go and don't let people sidetrack you. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. I just want to really point out to our listeners, you are a proven leader. You have built a successful business. You are a best-selling author. You have done incredible things. You have helped hundreds of thousands of people. You have been an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you. You're very kind. Yeah, it, it's such a, a privilege to have you here today. And I appreciate how you show up in the world for other people. What's the- well, Tony, thank you. Uh, let, me, let me just say, I, I think that um, humble people don't think less of themselves. They just try to think of themselves less. I love that. I absolutely love that. Thank you for sharing that. What's the advice a tip, a strategy that you can offer our listeners today before we sign off? You know, the old saying, um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm, yes. I don't think it's either one. I don't think it's what you know or who you know. It's how well you know each other that really counts. You can have some great contacts in your database, but the question is, could you pick up your telephone? Could you call that great contact? Would they answer your call? And if you ask them for a favor, would they be willing to consider it? It's not just who you know, it's how well you know each other that really counts in order to build a powerful personal network. And I would urge your listeners to go out and build meaningful relationships with people because that's what makes a difference in the world, not just through referrals, but through life. Yeah, absolutely. What great advice. And I'm actually going to take that challenge and look at my phone and ask myself that about every contact in there. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time today. I know that our listeners are going to be fired up. So again, let's just hit this one more time. Your books can be found on ivanmeisner.com. Yep, and on Amazon and in most major bookstores, yeah. Okay, and for more information about BNI, they can just go to BNI.com. BNI.com, and if you're interested in a lot of my content, uh, IvanMeisner.com. You can also follow me. I'm on all the social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Nice. Thank Instagram. you so much. It's been a pleasure. And again, you have an outrageously winning day, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. All right. Take care.